Okay, that's not exactly correct. It's not really a software as a service, um, though you could argue the acronym could stand for security as a service, um, but I don't think the industry would accept that. Um, it's, it's not a software as a service because there's a human element to it. It's not like um, Word for, for, for the cloud, if you like, um, or for Google Word or something like that, which is what most people associate as software as a service. Um, but it is an outsourced code review service. So yes, that's exactly what it is. The idea is with CodeDefend, you, uh, you write your code, whether it's code complete or not, you submit it uh, online to, on a secure line to ComSec, where we then work with you to define some customized rules. We run it through our engine. We then have the human element reviewing the, reviewing the results, and then we report back the vulnerabilities within the code. The first thing that's important to understand is that you need to have all types of security testing throughout the life cycle. So it's not like a case of saying one or the other. Um, to bring it back a little bit, I, I tend to prefer to use the, um, the sort of the word on the streets of these things. So, so DAST is essentially a, um, a, a black box test and SAST is a white box test. So, so what is a white box test? A white box test is where you actually have information and knowledge about the code, the system that you're testing. Um, so you understand some of its architecture, you understand the servers it's sitting on, you understand perhaps the IP addresses, and in this particular case for CodeDefend, you understand the code, you, under, you, you have the, the source code available to you. The advantages of that are, are, very, are, are obviously quite clear. The more information that you have, the easier it is to find out where you can exploit the code. You kind of assume that the environment that the code is operating or the application is operating in is not necessarily secure. The whole idea of uh, an enterprise having a strong um, gate around it and with uh, big you know, moats and crocodiles and things like that doesn't really exist anymore in, in, in the modern world. So why should software be any, any different? So th there is a great advantage to having uh, inside information about how the system is built and of course the code. With the black box testing, um, uh, that is different because what you're be basically given is, is very little information. Just try and break into this code, there it is. Of course, the advantage with that is that that's typically what the outside information, outside uh, people are going to be getting. So that will deal with anyone from script kiddies to, um, to general people that will try to hack in there but probably wouldn't cope with organized crime who would gain that inside information. So you do need to do both. Code, uh, code Defend basically sits within the, the white box testing. That's essentially the environment that it sits in. Very code and Fortify, and these great products. I mean, so I, I don't think we should uh, we should dismiss them. They're really, really good products, but they tend to only be able to pick up about forty percent of the sort of vulnerabilities that are out there. And the reason for that is that they 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 don't uh, they can't pick up things that humans can actually pick up. Um, so they could be well written code but actually doing bad things. So you could have a backdoor entry that is beautifully written code that Fortify will go through and say, yep, that's nicely written code, but it's still a backdoor entry uh, that would allow developers and hackers to be able to get into in the future, whereas a human will pick up on that quite quickly. So CodeDefend is a combination between code review, looking at the code, plus the human interaction to actually make sure that there's no false positives, or that uh, the other vulnerabilities, such as filter evasion, such as backdoor entries, um, such as CSERF attacks, etc., um, are picked up. I think that statement is spot on. With all of the tools, it's always as good as the, the humans that are using the, the tools. And in fact, that's why I've made a big push about the fact that CodeDefend is a combination between the third generation tools with, uh, with rules engines and of course the human aspects. What sets uh, ComSec up um, above and beyond, if you like, our competitors is that we are very much the security suppliers or consultancy companies 
to security companies themselves. So uh, many of the security companies, the household names, use, use us to actually review their products before they bring out security products into the market. So that shows you, you know, the background of our credibility. Um, we have some, uh, you know, some gr great developers and great um, uh, security uh, penetration testers as well. In terms of making sure that we are, are safe and we're secure, um, many of our guys, uh, especially out in, in, uh, in, in Israel where we have a, a, a large base, uh, have to go through polygraph tests, are, are employed by um, the banks and of course the government circles to make sure that we have the highest credibility uh, and accreditation in doing the work that we do. Um, we've been going for 22 years, which uh, obviously shows that, uh, uh, that we've been in, the, in this game a while. And of course, like most firms in this business, our reputation is everything. Okay, to be clear, with, with CoDefend and with Comset, we, d we don't offer any warranty around uh, any type of hacking that, that carries on afterwards. In fact, there are insurance companies that do offer services around these particular areas, but we're not an in insurance company per se. That's not the type of service that we, that we offer. Um, now, saying that, it is important to understand that any code analysis is only good for that duration of that time that it's done. Because as the market changes, as, as the development in, in hacking and uh, code analysis changes over time, then the, the, the situation will, will change. I'll, I'll give you an example um, to, to, to bring it back to life. When I was at, uh, when I was at Microsoft, we found um, a, a buffer overflow um, uh, back in 1998 um, for, in uh, some client software that we were working on. And uh, we explained to the client that if we fix this uh, piece of software, some of their applications would stop working. Now, at the time, this is pre-kind of internet, and the client chose at that time to say, actually, no, continue with it is because we need the applications to run. Of course, roll on five years, and that buffer over, over, overflow or overrun could have been used to actually then hack into these applications. Of course, the, the state has changed. So... The risk profiles change, the way that you attack will change over time. So whilst we come up with the vulnerabilities, whilst we find those vulnerabilities, they're only as good as that time and that sequence that we found them in. And that's why we don't offer warranty. Plus the fact if we were to offer warranty, we would end up just putting it back into the cost of the client to begin with anyway. If you go up to the comsetconsulting.co.uk uh, or codefend.com websites, then you'll find a wealth of different resources. Um, there's an advisory paper, there's a flash demo of, of, the, uh, of, of the Codefend service. Um, there's lots of information that you can find out about how to, uh, to get in touch with us as well to, uh, to get the service.